Tuesday and Thursday from 7 to 7.30 a.m. Central Time. Men's Prayer Call, where this is our 10th year here on the National Men's Prayer Call. And we just want to give God all the glory and all the praise. And we thank him for uh, the feet there, the founder of the, of the National Men's Prayer Call. Here we are some 10 years. Later, still going strong, still moving forward. So Facebook Live, take an opportunity to take this time to invite uh, somebody else in. Dynamic uh, speaker this morning, one of our very own our administrators, Dr. Pastor Devin Miller is going to be presenting this morning. So you're not going to want to miss this. Uh, so we're going to just go ahead and morning prayer so we can give him ample amount of time uh, to bring forth what thus said the Lord. The scripture for this morning says, John 14 and 27, peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried or upset. Do not be afraid. And of course, we know there's March Madness uh, bringing Christ into our day-to-day -day mental health matters. And I think that's an ideal scripture to close out the month for mental health matters. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and go to God in prayer we have. On our prayer list, uh, the family of uh, Curly uh, McCoy, Reginald Turner's brother-in-law, passed away. Uh, the family members of uh, Curtis, who were uh, uh, horrendously killed in the, in the tornadoes that uh, struck Mississippi. And uh, Miss, Miss Ray, uh, his friend's mother, passed away. And uh, Tony Charles is having heart challenges. And so we want to pray for those individuals. And just lift them, continue to lift them up in prayer and just let them know that God is able. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come this morning as humble as we know how. Uh, thanking you for this opportunity, Father, uh, and not taking it for granted, Father, because we know that this was a day that was not promised to us. So for that, Father, we said thank you. Father, we thank you for brand new grace and brand new mercy. And Father, we just thank you for the opportunity uh, to fellowship one to another here on the National Men's Prayer Call as we transition uh, into our 11th year, Father, because we've been going uh, 10 years strong. Uh, thank you, Father God, for the vision. Father God, thank you uh, for uh, the foundation that was laid. Father God, thank you for allowing us and giving us, Father God, the ability to build and construct on this foundation uh, here, which we call the National Men's Prayer Call. We've been able to reach uh, a plethora of men, not just on a local level, but on a national level. So we thank you, Father. We thank you for that opportunity. And I thank you, Father God, for uh, the chance meeting of uh, meeting Dr. Mack and Brother Ben and Franklin uh, that day in Dallas some five years ago. Father, just thank you for the opportunity, Father God. Thank you for the blessing. I thank you for the growth and the anointing that you've placed over this ministry and that you've placed over us individually and collectively. Father, we thank you for every man that has joined us here on the National Men's Prayer Call this morning. We ask, uh, decree and declare that they don't experience any lack in any aspect of their life. Uh, Father God, we know that it's about relationships and, and building those relationships and understanding what it takes to uh, for those relationships to grow. Father God, we know that we have to continue to provide nurturing and care, Father, within those relationships, Father. Show us, Father, as men, how to be head of the household. Show us, Father, as men, how to be leaders in our community. Show us, Father, as men, how to be good disciples in your kingdom. Thank you, Father. And Father, we thank you uh, for our help, mate. We thank you for our significant others, Father. We thank you for our wives, Father. Just thank you. Father, read, Father, your word said, he that found the wife found the good thing. Thank you, Lord, because I know that it wasn't by happenstance, Father. I know that it was by way of the Holy Spirit. I should pray and hope that every man uh, feel the same way, Father God, and understand that in order to continue to, for that relationship to blossom and grow, that there's going to be some nurturing and some caring and some uh, adjustments that we're going to have to make uh, in order to continue to grow. So we thank you, Father, for our significant other. And Father, we just thank you 
uh, for this day, Father, that was not promised to us, Father. We thank you for all of those individuals who have continued to work tirelessly uh, throughout uh, the pandemic. Father, we just thank you, Father, for our school administrators. We thank you for the teachers. We thank you for our kids, the leaders of tomorrow. Father God, continue to allow us and to uh, embed in us, Father God, the knowledge and wisdom that we need in order to help them to continue to grow and continue to blossom. Because, Father, we know that the next administrators of the National Men's Prayer Call is coming out of that generation, Father. The next uh, decade of preachers is coming out of that generation, Father. The next decade of businessmen is coming out of that generation, Father. So allow us, Father God, and provide us with what we need in order to create a foundation for our young people to continue to grow and bless. And Father, here we are on, on, on the National Marriage Prayer Call this morning, Father, for uh, two reasons, to pray and to motivate and uplift uh, the men of God and the women of God. And Father, here we have those families and those individuals that were acknowledged on our prayer list this morning. And Father, we just I'm just going to say, look to the hills from which cometh their help, because all of your help comes from the Lord. And I tell you that in your circumstances, walk by faith and not by sight. Because what you see may say that uh, there's no way out. But if you walk by spiritual uh, faith and, and not by earthly sight, you'll understand and God will provide you the vision. But God will provide you with the know-how, Father. God will provide you with, with the joy in the midst of the storm. Thank you, Father. Cradle those families, Father God. Keep them lifted, Father God. Keep their minds uh, stayed on you, Father. They need you right now, Father God. They need your community standpoint to let them know that they're not in that thing alone, Father God. Whatever the journey is, whatever the sickness is, Father God, whatever the dilemma is, let them know that they have a band of brothers that's praying for them and their family. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, on this day, Father God, if we come uh, with a message on mental health, we want to acknowledge and pray for our, our brother, Pastor Devin Miller, as he brings forth the message. Father God, I pray that he experienced nothing but increase, Father God, in every aspect of his life, Father God, in his ministry, um, in his relationship, Father God, and just uh, his business, Father God, where he ministered to those uh, individuals uh, who are in relationship, and Father God, and trying to get them to understanding what it means and what it is to be in a stable relationship and how to maintain that stability. Thank you, Lord. For his presence, Father God, thank you for his voice, God, God, thank you for the authority that you anointed him with in the kingdom. And Father, we ask, Father God, that you empty him and allow him to be filled with Holy Spirit. And Father, let me be uh, just around the rim of the substance so I can experience some of the overflow. Thank you this morning. And Father, we just want to thank you from a collective standpoint, Father God, and just ask, Father God, that you cover us on this day that was not promised to us, Father God, and strengthen us, Father God, where we will be better uh, than we were yesterday. And Father, these things in your daughter's son, Jesus' name, we pray, we decree, and declare. Amen. Well, amen and amen. You know, this morning, and even the, the last couple of times, the enemy has made a concerted effort to be able to block the message coming forward. Uh, you know, last week, that was a strong, powerful word. And today, hearing from, from Devin Miller, you know, let me just talk to you about uh, Pastor Devin for just one second. You know, it seems like often we ask him almost at the last minute. And I was uh, looking at it in another direction and the word came that he's going to be our speaker this morning. And I didn't want to just come at the last minute, but he is always instant in season and out and out of season ready with a ready word so we just want to applaud and just thank uh pastor miller for for uh, what he brings to this table you know um I'm, I'm, this morning as i got up in, in in my my prayer time the lord told me this the only thing standing in your way is the way you're looking at things he says change your focus and change your future and um and uh uh Anthony just shared, you know, that whole that scripture about walking by faith and not by sight. So that's the important thing. And the mental health matters is uh, because we're looking at things from the eye of the world, from from just from sight. But when we look at it from the position of faith, it opens up a whole new world. You know, uh, Proverbs says, behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And as we close out 
this topic on mental health matters during March Madness as all the brackets have been busted and we're looking down to a final four that is nobody we thought would ever possibly be there. That's how our lives is. God can change it in an instant. So this morning, I want you not only to take copious notes, but I want you to take creative notes. I want you to hear the spirit as it's shared through our brother, Devin Miller. Brother Miller, are you there? Yes, sir. Good morning uh, to you, Dr. Mack, and to all the men that, and women that are here uh, this morning. It is always a privilege and honor uh, to be able to speak with you. Uh, and specifically to talk to you on this last Thursday of uh, March uh, and closing out March Madness. And as uh, Dr. Mack alluded, uh, it has been madness in March if you've been following the NCAAs. I, I, if I had hair, I would have pulled it out because all of my number ones dropped by the wayside and, and even my number twos dropped. Uh, and, and so we're seeing a, a final four and a national championship where someone, uh, you know, quite possibly who has never won before uh, will win the championship. And, and uh, with the exception of UConn, all of these teams, this is their first time being at the last dance. Uh, and, and what it told me was when we talk about mental health, you know, as Dr. Mack alluded, you know, we can change how we think if we put it to our minds to change how we think. Um, and, and what I want to speak on this, this morning briefly is from this very simple message, uh, what it, which is entitled, What Have We Learned? What have we learned in this entire month where uh, six times going on seven uh or eight, or eight, excuse me, we had speakers uh, talking about mental health, about men and mental health and how to take care of your mental health. And, and, and as I was preparing, you know, and asking God, what should be the message? It was really simple to understand how do we keep ourselves in a positive state of mind as Christian men? And it's very important for us to look at this from a Christian perspective. Uh, the National Men's Prayer Call is about, you know, looking to the word of God to understand how we are to be. Now, that is not to say that people from other faiths and, and other beliefs cannot listen to the call, but we look at the world through the lens of the word of God. And so we get our understanding, we get our direction, we get our motivation, we get our inspiration from the word of God. And so uh, as I prepared, there was nowhere else for me to go, but to the word to find out what is it that we are to learn as we have been speaking on men, men's mental health during the month of March uh, and in the month, in, and excuse me, and during month, March madness, excuse me, you put all them M's together, boy, you'd be in trouble. Um, the first thing we have to learn is that it is a choice. Mental health comes from a lot of times stress or pressure that we put on our lives that we don't need to. Um, and so what scripture rel relates to that? Well, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So once you make the decision to allow Christ to be your savior and Lord, that means you are also making the decision to think differently, to look at life differently, to take on life differently. So that's the first thing you have to do. And what we've learned is it, we have to make a choice of who we're going to serve. The Bible says you cannot serve two masters. Uh, and we have to understand as Christian men that there's only two ways to go. Uh, either you're going to go the way of the temporary or you're going to go the way of the permanent. What do I mean? I mean, either you're going to go through the devil's camp or you're going to talk about being a part of God's kingdom. I've never seen a camp be permanent. A camp is always moving. A kingdom is stationary. And so you have to make a choice. Which one am I going to be a part of? And, and once I make that choice, then some things kick in. 
And there are five things that I want to raise up to you today, uh, and then I'm going to get out your way. The first thing is, once you make that choice, is that you will realize that the peace of God is equal to peace of mind. The peace of God is equal to peace of mind. Now, now where do we find that? Go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, and it says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And so when you understand that, then, then you know, there, there's scripture that says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto your own understanding in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Men and women of God, we're always going somewhere. We don't just stay at home and hope things to happen. We either make it happen or it happens around us. And so when we have the peace of God, then we understand we have the direction from God, and then we understand we have the vision of God, which is to grow the kingdom. That becomes our purpose. That becomes our aim. And and in order to do that, we must have a peace of mind. The mind that God gives us must be peaceful in order for us to understand the people that we work with. Number two, we should have the mind of Christ. The Bible is very clear in Philippians chapter two, verse five, and it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And so the mind of Christ equals to the obedience of God. If our minds are, if we've made the choice to be new creations and then we've made the choice to be in God's kingdom, then we must follow the one and take direction from the one who gives us direction, which is the one who's over the kingdom, which is God. I, I speak often to under, for people to understand Christ is not over the kingdom. God still got the kingdom. Christ is the example by which we are kingdom citizens. So we don't pray to Jesus. We don't worship Jesus. We follow Jesus. We imitate Jesus so that we can be obedient to the word, will, and way of God. And so Philippians says there further, if you read read further, it says, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. What does that mean? That means Christ came like us to show us what it would be like to be obedient to God's word, will, and way. Why? Because he was the word made flesh. And his example is an example to us that we too, can be the word in flesh if we study the manual. There's nothing we have to go to outside of what the Bible says, but we have to be able to understand the Bible, which means we have to study the Bible, which it says in Timothy, to study to show thyself approved. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then I saw somewhere else in the Bible that said, thy word is truth. So if we're studying the truth and we're walking by truth and we're not leaning to our own understanding, we should have, and we have the mind of Christ, we should have the peace of God. Number three, a transformed mind, a mind of a new creation, a mind that has decided to to, uh, have the peace of mind of God from God and has decided to have the mind of Christ to be obedient to God's word, will, and way, that is a transformed mind, and it equals the the ability, excuse me, to walk a Christ-like life. See, we have to understand, men and women of God, that being a Christian, the definition is Christ-like. It's not your church-like. It's not your denomination like. It's not your pastor's like. It's not your bishop's like. It is Christ like. And if you're going to be Christ like, then you need the mind of Christ so that you can have the peace of God so that you can be in your right mind. I'm going somewhere if you keep going with me. So this is so your mind has to be transformed. Where do we find that? Go to Romans. Chapter 12, verse 2, and it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing 
of your mind that you may prove what is that good and and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do you understand the pattern? We, if, if we don't transform our minds and start walking and talking and being like Christ and stop waiting for Christ to come and deal with what we're dealing with and, be, and deal with it like Christ would deal with it, which means we have to have the mind of Christ, which means we have to study the manual, which means we have to have the, the peace of God in order to deal with anything that comes our way. Why? Because being Christ-like means we know how to deal with temptation because he dealt with temptation through the word of God. He didn't do it through his intellect because he was the word. He didn't do it necessarily through his, his ability as a carpenter. He did it because he was the word. And he was able to take the word and apply the word to every situation. Men and women of God, what are you doing when a situation arises? Do you lean to your own understanding or do you lean on the understanding of the word of God? Are you studying enough to know that when calamity comes, when the devil shows his head, do you know that the Bible says that at the name of Jesus, the devil will flee? See, we don't have to deal with stuff if we know how to deal, how to make stuff go away. So, so, so we have to have the peace of God, the mind of Christ, and then we have to have a transformed mind. Number four, we have to have a focused mind. And a focused mind is the ability to demonstrate the fruit of the spirit. See, when, once you decide that you're going to be a new creation, you take on a whole new way of living. It's not membership to your local church. Forgive me, pastors. I'm sorry for busting bubbles. It ain't about being a part of the church. It's about being a part of the kingdom. And when we understand that we are a part of a kingdom and we understand who runs the kingdom and who is the imitator that we should be in order to be a part, be good kingdom citizens, then we can be focused. You know, when I moved from doing my doing my job at DeSoto in, in DeSoto High School, uh, DeSoto uh, 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 West, uh, and as a security officer and moved into my business full time, God told me in our transition that anything that I was doing that was not for what he told me to do was a distraction. And sometimes men and women of God, we get distracted. And that distraction causes stress. And that stress causes physical, mental, and spiritual, and emotional pain. Why? Simply because we said we were going to change, but we really didn't change. We said we wanted to be like Christ, but we really didn't want to be like Christ. And the Bible says you can't be double-minded. You, you can't serve two masters, and so you have to have a focused mind. And where do we find that? If you go to Ephesians chapter 5, Verse nine, it says, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter, yeah, chapter five. I gotta make sure I got my own scriptures right. There it is. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Now that was a scripture I had never seen before until Dr. Matt called me and I had to look in the Bible and I had to do study. But I had never seen that scripture. It says, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Goodness means that we're doing those things that are pleasing to God. Righteousness means that we can stand before God uh, boldly without the hint or stench of sin on our lives. And truth means the word of God. So the fruit of the spirit that we find in Galatians hinges on goodness and righteousness and truth. So you have to ask yourself, what am I leaning on? Am I leaning on my own way or am I leaning on goodness and truth and righteousness? And that's not just when I go to church on Sunday and I might go to Bible study on Wednesday. If you church a God in Christ, it don't mean that it only happens on Tuesday and Friday. 
It means every day you are living in goodness, in righteousness, and in truth. Because what? You're focused. Everything you do has a purpose. And then finally it says, you got to have a made up mind. And a made up mind is the ability to be a change agent for the kingdom. People got to understand that our purpose, men and women, our purpose is to represent God through Christ in every arena that we find ourselves in. And in order to do that, you got to have a made up mind. You got to say, I know that I know that I know who I work for. It's like when you, when you, if you look at this from a secular perspective, is if you work for Coke, bottling Coca-Cola, you, you, you may like Pepsi on the side, but when they see you, you represent Coke. You talk Coke, you walk Coke. Why? Because that's what you represent. It may not be your personal situation, in, and I'm only talking in the secular. It may not be your personal preference, but that job pays your bills. That job keeps you with good health insurance. That job gives you the spirit of motivation to do all that you can for that company. Well, we have a company that we work for too. It's called God's Kingdom. It provides good health benefits. It gives, us a, it gives us an everlasting place in, in which we can go and we can aspire to. And when situations come, it protects us so that we have a re and it provides for us so that we have no other choice but to rep it right because it gives to us more than we can ever give to it. And so when we understand that, we got to have a made up mind. For God I live and for God I die. We got to be like what Job said, naked I came in, naked I'm going out. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that Lord was not a capital L, little O-R-D. That was a big L, big O, big R, big D, meaning he was talking about God. So when we understand that we've got to be the change agents, we need to be the ones that when we walk into the room, we, we can understand through discernment, we can feel it through discernment, and we can pray without ceasing to transform the situation. When you walk into a room, they ought to know that the representation of God has walked in because you've got a made up mind. They, they should know that, that you don't deal with nothing else except what thus saith the Lord because your mind is focused. They should know that when you that you're in a situation that, that you are there because you know that you can you have purpose, you know that you have a, a reason, and because you have a transformed mind. They should know that when you speak, you speak with the mind of Christ, not looking at it as the world looks at it, but looking at it through the eyes of Christ so that you're doing it in obedience to God. And then finally, they should know that you are the peace creator because you have the peace of God and you have peace of mind. But the question is, as I close, have you made the choice? Have you made the choice to follow Christ, imitate Christ so that you can be a part of the kingdom that will be for eternity? Or are you still vacillating in the camp of the enemy trying to figure it out? First of all, you need to figure it out. If you can't figure it out, you need to talk to somebody who has figured it out. And in talking to somebody that has figured it out, then you can work it out. Because God has a purpose for each one of us, and we cannot die until that purpose is fulfilled, either for ourselves or for someone else. And so as we move into April and uh, April 1st, don't be a fool. Don't, don't, don't look at April and say, well, we got through that. Huh? We good. Because as those young men who are getting ready to play in the final four realized they weren't supposed to be there, but they got a, still got a job to do. And they're still focused. They're still preparing to do what they were called to do in that final four. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we may not be in the final four, but we're in this thing, in this game called life. And we got to play it until the coach 
calls us off the field or off the court. And he's not going to do that until every person in this world has had the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. And then when that happens, the head coach is going to let the assistant know it's time to go get the players off the court because it's time for them to come home because they've won the championship. God bless you and may God keep you as our prayer. Well, brother, let me just share this with you. Those five points are poignant and powerful, very profound. And if we look at it from that perspective, that we, we find the peace of God. That pe See, when we're talking about mental health, the peace of God is all the mental health we need. When we operate in the peace of God, that means that all the things that would cause us stress and distress and discomfort that would cause us to be mentally unbalanced or unstable is removed. So that peace of God is so very important. And then finally having the mind of God, that mind of Christ that allows us to operate from a perspective of, of, a, of a kingdom perspective a transformed mind, a mind that used to be, be lost, a mind that used to be stressed, but a transformed mind, a renewed mind, that's our daily responsibility. That's why we come on here every Tuesday and Thursday morning so that we can help you to transform and renew your mind so that you can operate in your kingdom principle. And then a focused mind. You know, this focus, if you're all over the place and just scattered, you're not able to accomplish anything. But when you take, um, when you take a mind a magnifying glass and focus that 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 sunlight you can burn a hole through anything that focused mind and finally a made up mind when you have a made up mind even those circumstances happen situations happen problems come at you even though you're everything seems like it's gonna fail and that you're gonna regardless of what comes you're still waking up that next morning like pinky in the brain he says what are we going to do today we're going to take over the world we're going to renew the kingdom we're going to expand the kingdom that's a made-up mind brother Devin, brother miller i don't know if you know you seem like you were just trying to push that out it was in you and you were struggling to get the message out like they like people wasn't listening but we heard and more important we felt the word that the Lord had deposited in you this morning, that, we, that you have to, that it's all about the mindset. And when you're dealing with the issues that would cause your mindset to get unsettled, that you can go back to these five principles, that you find the peace of God, that you have a made up mind, that you have, a, um, you have the mind of, of, of God, a transformed mind, a focused mind, and a made up mind, ain't nothing can stop you. And the brothers, as we're going into this next season, he said, don't be no April fool. But he said that you would be foolish if you, does, if you don't operate in those five principles. We thank you. That was a message that I think that over the course of the day, it's going to marinate. Sometimes when you, when you put that, that pot on and just let it slow simmer and cook, when it's all done and, and you put that on your plate and you eat it, everything has come together and created an incredible stew, an incredible meal. That's what we had this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Miller. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for an opportunity to hear your word, to feel your the, the, the peace that only comes from you, that, to understand that when we operate in the mind of Christ, when we operate with a transformed and a renewed mind, when we operate with a focused mind and a made up mind, that the things that are in front of us are stopping us from doing the assignment that you've given us will be removed and we can walk forward. Father, we thank you that it's, that it's the journey that we have to appreciate and not the destination. Our destination is eternity and there's no amount of time that can, be, to, that can explain eternity. So as we walk toward eternity, we thank you that while we're on this earthly plane, we get to enjoy the journey. Every day is a new opportunity. And if we face difficulty, circumstances, issues, positions, all the things that we can face, if we face them, we, when we face them with that peace of God, that renewed mind, that made up mind, that transformed and focused mind, we can not only overcome, but we will be victorious. We thank you, we praise you, and we receive and rejoice in this. In Jesus' name, amen. Good word, Dr. Miller. Good word. Thank, thank you, sir. Deacon, you're looking good. You're looking sharp there, Deacon. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Devin, we really appreciate you, man. Thank you for uh, 